I think every driver at some point asks himself one important question. How to save fuel as much as possible? There are a lot of different tips on the internet. Some are useful, such as not using the air conditioner and opening the windows instead. Some are just stupid, such as not using the brake pedal. Well, in fact, the second advice is better than the first. Also, car manufacturers add various functions, such as an automatic start-stop. But is it useful? So, in this video we will look into this, test and practice and highlight the best ways to help reduce your car's fuel consumption as much as possible. Also, it's important to note that the video will contain a lot of tests, because I not only collected information, but also checked it to distinguish what is really useful and what is just a myth. So, I could not perform all these tests in real life, so I used a simulator, BeamNG Drive. This game has a simulation of air and liquids, simulation of car aerodynamics depending on the shape of the car, a reliable simulation of all mechanical components that work in the car, and so on. Also, Audi uses BeamNG Touch to test safety systems for its cars, therefore you can be sure of the accuracy of our tests. Now, let's get started. So, to begin with, let's talk about what your car already has that helps you save fuel. First of all, a popular feature in modern cars, when you stop at a traffic light, for example, the car automatically turns off the engine. This seems to help reduce fuel consumption. Well, in fact, this is true only if you stop for at least 7 seconds. If not, the car will use more fuel to turn on the engine than to just stand with it on. But actually, this feature helps reduce fuel consumption by up to 10% but it has its drawbacks. For example, the engine starting system becomes much more complex, because when the car is at traffic light, it needs to start much faster than usual. Also, there is a need for a special, more expensive battery, which is designed for frequent cycles of discharge and charge. In other words, the system is useful, but it has disadvantages, like much more complex design. Probably the most important point is driving style. How you drive has a very big impact on your car's fuel consumption. To better understand how to drive efficiently and what to avoid, let's compare it to riding a bicycle. When riding a bike, you don't pedal constantly and then slam on the brakes just before stopping. When going downhill, you don't pedal at all. You just let the bike coast. You also avoid constant acceleration and abrupt braking. Instead, you accelerate and brake smoothly conserving your energy. So, why not drive a car the same way? That's exactly how you should drive. An experienced driver rarely uses a brake pedal, and that's true. It's about anticipating how much to accelerate. For example, if you see a traffic light that has been green for a while, it's logical to assume it might turn red soon. Instead of speeding up and try to make it, let's better gradually slow down without using the brakes. Engine braking is a crucial skill, but don't shift the gearbox into neutral during this time. When the car is in gear, fuel consumption is minimal, but when you shift into neutral gear, fuel consumption increases. It's because of modern fuel injectors work this way. When the car is coasting and the driver isn't pressing the gas pedal, the car enters the engine braking mode and uses little fuel. In neutral, the engine runs at higher and less efficient revs. So, knowing the skill how to engine brake, is a key for fuel efficiency. I did a test on two identical cars to see how driving style affects fuel consumption. For one, I drove economically and carefully for 20 minutes, and then drove the second one aggressively with sharp accelerations and braking for the same distance. The results showed that the first car had a fuel consumption of 29.1 liters per 100 km, but the second one had only 12.8 liters per 100 km with almost the same distance and average speed. A second test on a car with a smaller engine also showed a difference in fuel consumption. Over a 14km trip, the car driven economically had 97.5% fuel left, while the aggressively driven car had only 95.9% remaining. So driving style has the biggest impact on the fuel consumption. 
So another point and quite common myth is, if you have a car that is not new, there is an opinion that the main reason for increasing fuel consumption is technical condition of the car. Therefore, to reduce fuel consumption, you need to change the spark plugs more often than the manufacturer recommends. For example, if you perform a technical inspection not once every 15,000 km, as written in the service book, but once every 10,000 km, it will lead to a reduction in consumption by 10 or 15%. The additional cost of repair, they say, will pay off. But this is not the case. One of the reasons for increased fuel consumption is dirty or frayed spark plugs. They perform the function of igniting the fuel mixture, gasoline plus air. But with a frayed electrode or increased carbon deposits on it, the mixture will light up irregularly. Fuel consumption will increase by about 15 or 20%, but it can be doubled. Therefore, it is necessary to pay attention to the technical condition of the car and do a technical inspection on time. But it is not worth doing it extra time. Another common myth is any additional equipment increases the engine speed and therefore leads to increased fuel consumption. For example, the operation of each of the devices, such as heated glass and seats, rearview mirrors or air conditioner, leads to additional fuel consumption of about 0.5 or 0.8 liters per 100 km. And if the devices are turned on at the same time, the consumption will increase by as much as 15 or 20 percent. Well, yeah, fuel consumption is actually increased because of the included electrical devices, but the heating of the glass and mirrors affect safety, so it's better not to save on it. As for the air conditioner, by improving the aerodynamics with the windows closed, the fuel consumption for the working air conditioner is worth it. Also about fuel quality. Of course, it greatly affects fuel consumption. Better quality fuel means lower consumption. Modern cars have sensors that monitor the air and fuel mixture. With poor quality fuel, the mixture is lean, and the computer increases fuel injection time to enrich it, resulting in higher consumption. Also, some gas stations might dilute fuel to sell more, so always refuel at reliable stations. Some stations sell additives that claim to increase octane number, but are actually just naphthalene, which can clog fuel injection system over time. So avoid these additives and take care of your car. Another important factor is tire pressure. It determines the contact area between the tire and the road surface, which significantly affects how the car accelerates and maintains speed. I conducted several tests that clearly show the impact of tire pressure on fuel consumption. At a speed of 85 km per hour, the most inflated tires consume at 9 liters per 100 km. Tires at 30 psi consume at 9.6 liters, while the least inflated tires at 10 psi consume at a massive 23 liters. I also tested tires at 20 and 40 psi, and here are the results. So, as you can see, tire pressure has a very big impact on fuel consumption, so don't forget to monitor your tire inflation levels. However, all inflated tires can negatively affect the ride comfort and the suspension of the car. Another common question is how fast you should drive on the highway. I did a bunch of tests and they showed the following fuel consumption at different speeds. So at 60 km per hour, our car consumes 5.3 liters per 100 km. At 70 km per hour, 4.7 liters. At 80, 4.9. At 90, 4.7 and at 100 km per hour, 5.4 liters. So the most fuel efficient speeds are between 70 and 90 km per hour, depends on the car. Point faster increases engine revs and aerodynamic drag, which raises fuel consumption. And the next and the last tip for cars with a manual transmission. You know that different gears have different ratios. For example, in third gear, the engine makes three turns or one wheel gear turn. Starting from the 4th or 5th gear, the ratio is 1 to 1, which helps with fuel efficiency. Higher gears generally mean better fuel economy. For instance, at 60 km per hour in 4th gear, fuel consumption is 16.2 liters per 100 km, but it decreases with higher gears. So, in the end of the day, 
I have to say that to save you, you have to use the start stop function if your car has it, also drive smoothly and economically, monitor your tire pressure and keep it at the recommended level, also use higher gears to keep engine revs low, and on the highway drive between 70 and 90 km per hour for optimal efficiency, also use high quality fuel, prefer using air conditioner over opening windows, and keep your car in good condition, but avoid unnecessary maintenance. It's simple. Now you know how to save fuel while driving. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you soon.